Hi, in this video we're going to build an Unraid server from start to finish and that's going to include hardware, installing Unraid, media docker containers and VMs. Hi there guys and welcome to a different type of video this week. I'm going to start doing some server builds or some computer builds and as it's very hard as a small YouTube channel to get any kind of sponsoring and to get free products sent to me, I thought how can I actually go about doing some builds for you guys and being able to actually fund it. So what I thought I'd do is do different builds, maybe every month or so doing a build video and then at the end of the build I'm going to put the server for sale on eBay and sell it to anyone who wants it. And then hopefully by selling the server that will fund me for the next project and so I can keep on doing various different projects and different builds. So this project, I thought it would be quite fun to build a high core server. Um, as probably a lot of you know I really enjoy messing around with VMs and the more cores you've got I always think the more the merrier. So what I thought we'd do is build a 10 core server using a Xeon 2650 version 3. Now I managed to get this CPU fairly cheap because I got an engineering sample sent over from China but it fully supports VTX and VTD so we've got full IO MMU so it shouldn't be any sort of problem. And this CPU uses an LGA 2011 V3 socket so I thought we'd pair it up with an X99 motherboard. Um, at first I tried this motherboard here, an X99M killer but unfortunately when I received this motherboard it was dead on arrival so I couldn't get hold of another one like this so I got a very similar one. I changed it for an ASRock X99M Extreme 4 which is pretty much exactly the same. Now I really like the ASRock motherboards. Personally I find them rock solid stable. I always have good results with IO MMU groups. They've got two LAN ports, USB 3 etc. Everything that we're going to need for a good Unraid server. Okay, and this is the CPU here. This is how it came to me in the post. So this is the 2650 V3 CPU, a 10 core CPU with a base clock speed of 2.2 gigahertz. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put the CPU into the socket and put some RAM in this board and just fire it up and just test everything works before we go building the server and putting everything in the case. I will remove the protective casing over the CPU. Now if we pick up the CPU, I'm not sure if you can see in the camera here, but there's a little kind of arrow on the side of the CPU. There's also an arrow on the side of the CPU socket as well. So we want to line up that arrow with the arrow on the motherboard. And then that just drops straight in like that. And then we need to close up the clamps. And now using a cotton bell, I'm just going to wipe the top of the CPU just to make sure there's no dust on there or anything. And then we want to put some high quality thermal paste onto the CPU. Now normally we just put a bit about the size of P in the centre. You don't need too much thermal paste when you do this and always make sure you use a good quality thermal paste. Always use a ceramic based one because if it spills over the edge by mistake it's not going to short anything out. Now I know thermal pastes such as the Arctic Silver are pretty popular but they actually use pure silver inside of their thermal paste and silver is actually the highest conductor of electricity there is only followed by copper so it's not really a good idea to use this because it is possible it could spill out over the edges and short out a component. Okay, so I'm going to air cool this build, and for that I'm going to use a Cooler Master 212 cooler with a red LED fan. But before putting the CPU cooler on, I find it easier first to fit the RAM, so the cooler doesn't get in the way when doing so. And for RAM I'm using a single stick of 16GB DDR4 2133MHz RAM. So the motherboard I'm using at the moment is actually the third one, because after the dead on arrival board, I actually decided to try an MSI X99 gaming board, but on testing it I found that it didn't support ECC RAM. Now I think that's absolutely crazy, as the X99 chipset clearly supports it, 
and it's just that MSI decided not to enable it in those boards. So just be careful when looking at motherboards that you check that if necessary. Right, so back to our build. Now remember always check your motherboard manual just to check how you should populate your DIMM slots. So push the DIMM right into the slot till it clicks then pull the two catches up at the side. I always like to push the heatsink on then take it off just to check that the thermal paste is spreading nicely and you can see here you know it looks like it's spread across fairly well so we know that's good. So now I'm going to put the standoffs on so I can actually attach the heatsink properly. And when you put the heatsink on, you can often put it either orientation around. I'm going to put it this way so the airflow goes from the fan to the back of the case, then vent it out the back. Um, when you do it up, do it up in a crisscross fashion so as to not put too much strain in one place. And when I made this fan up, I put a cable tie on one side just to keep the cable a bit shorter. Then I could just put the cable across like this and plug it into the motherboard. So the heatsink and fan are on now, so I'm going to give it a test out now. I'm going to test it outside of the case at first just to check everything works before putting it in the case. Because there's nothing worse than having everything finished and then you find out that something doesn't work. So anyway, I tested it out and everything seemed fine. Um, managed to get the BIOS up and everything, so everything looked good, so now it's time to put it in the case. And for case I wanted a micro ATX case and I chose the AeroCool Dead Silence in gold. I think it looks quite a nice case. And it was actually quite hard to get the motherboard in because the CPU cooler was so high I was a bit worried it wasn't actually going to fit. But I managed to get it in anyway. And what I really liked about the case is actually all of the screws and things came in their own individual packets that were actually named. So it made it really easy to know which screws went where. Um, for power I used the Antec 550 watt power supply. And for graphics card, I didn't want something too powerful, but I still wanted it to be able to run a game. So I thought a good all-round choice would be a GTX 750 Ti. And the hard drives were really easy to fit. They used just a kind of clamping together tray that was clamped into the hard drives, then you can fit them in the side. And for the discs, I used two 4TB Western Digital drives. And these are going to be used for the array. Um, I chose 4TB drives because they're fairly cost effective. Um, I put one as parity and one as data. So it's easy just to add additional 4TB drives to expand the array without a great expense. Um, next, I had to basically tidy up all the cables, um, cable tying various cables and trying to make it look a bit neat and tidy. Um, obviously you had to look through the motherboard manuals, find out where all the fans fitted and where all the like power switches and power LEDs went etc. Now my cable management skills aren't the best ever, but I tried to do a fairly good job by just using cable ties and keeping everything neat and tidy and out of the way. Um, and lastly I wanted to fit an NVMe drive to use as the cache drive. Um, as it's a 10 core server, I'm obviously going to be installing VMs on this and so a really nice speedy cache drive that will host the VMs is going to definitely be a good plus. Um, it just fitted in easily into the slot and then was secured with a screw into the end. Um, that brought me to the end of the hardware part of the build. Um, this is what it looks like inside. You can see the two 4TB drives there, but we could actually put another three in. One in the included 3.5 inch bay, but we could also put another two with an adapter in the 5.25 inch bay that's designed for the CD drive. Um, anyway, that brought me to the end of the build, so it's now time to turn it on and just check that it worked. Um, it's working fine, so now it's time to set up the BIOS correctly and then install Unraid. Anyway, that's all coming in part two, but if you like this part, then please hit the like button, and if you're not a subscriber, then please subscribe to the channel. Anyway guys, whatever you're up to for the rest of the day, I hope it's good, and I'll catch you in the next video.